this year is leaving no one behind. And that's where we're really recognizing that uh, as food systems are increasingly stressed, as, as the world faces these overlapping crises, poly crises, as we say, trying to emerge from climate change, then war is impacting uh, you know, value chains, food, fertilizers, prices are going up. Um, the impact first is felt the most by those who are most vulnerable, obviously. Uh, poor populations, uh, rural populations, uh, oftentimes women, uh, children, uh, different uh, landless laborers, smallholder, uh, agricultural households, this sort of a thing. So it's critically important that we ensure that we have the data and we have the systems to reach uh, those people who are um, suffering undernourishment and lacking access. Because at the moment, uh, food availability still is not the issue. Worldwide, there's enough food for everybody. It's a question of accessibility. Now, of course, we are concerned in the face of these uh, overlapping crises, especially climate change and the impact that these you know, heat waves and, and flood events and such are having on agriculture here in India and in every country in the world. Uh, we are concerned looking ahead, availability might become a problem in the next year, two years, five years ahead. So we have to prepare for that. Uh, but really, um, you know, if we scan, if we look across the world, uh, something like 828 million people are currently hungry. Um, over 100 million of those have been added just in, in, uh, during the, the COVID pandemic. Uh, and this number just continue to increase. You know, if children don't have proper nutrition, they're not going to be able to learn. Maybe they won't even be able to make it to, to school. If women don't have proper nutrition, they're not going to be able to, uh, to, to well, first of all, to have children who are born um, with, with proper health status and not uh, be able to help ensure that households are achieving what they need in terms of food security and, and across the board. So food security, you know, is critical uh, for, for individuals, for households, for communities, uh, for society at, at large, for all of the SDGs. Um, again, it's now really about uh, increasing productivity where we can. In India, for example, a lot of the work that UN system is engaged in is about helping especially smallholders improve uh, productivity. At the moment, productivity on average is relatively low. Um, secondly, it's about ensuring access to, to markets, access to foods uh, for those people who may face different uh, barriers. Right, exactly. About improving the, the efficiency of, of distribution systems, of logistics, and about changing our behaviors at, at, a, at a fundamental level, uh, about um, eating local uh, production, about uh, focusing more on consuming seasonal uh, production, about understanding those crops which are what we often call uh, superfoods, which are more climate resilient, using less water, and actually more nutritious. So uh, here, for example, I'm very pleased that uh, we are very pleased that India, uh, it was really India's initiative uh, to um, propose millets as uh, next year's uh, superfood. So next year will be the year of the millets. It's really important that we transition a lot of the production away from monocropping and, and away from uh, certain uh, food, food products that are low value in nutrition, um, high consumption in terms of water and, and, and not very resilient uh, to climate uh, as well. So changing the nature of the markets, changing the nature of, the, of, of what we eat and understanding value uh, in, in agribusiness and agrosystems in, in a different way. It's not just about governments, it's not just about businesses and industries, it's also about individuals as consumers uh, and the way that we can drive markets, um, changing our, our uh, consumption so that it's sustainable, so that we can all thrive in the future.